Welcome to the celebration of Holy Eucharist on this, the uh, evening service of Ash Wednesday. And we welcome those who are worshiping with us on our YouTube channel today. We acknowledge that we are worshiping on unceded ancestral territory of the Algonquin people. God grant us to live in peace and friendship with all the peoples of this land. Would you please stand as you're able? <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you to be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of, of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, the Lord says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering, a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will say the psalm responsibly, responsibly. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will, he will not accuse, accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. A father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone. And in its place shall know, shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever on those who fear him. And his righteousness on children's children on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments and do them. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him 
we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we will urge you also not to listen, uh, I'm sorry, also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in affliction, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in all repute, in evil repute, and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ Jesus Christ. Loving God, grant each of us a word from your word in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, on Sunday, I commended to uh, those who were uh, within earshot uh, to uh, consider some of the devotional materials that we have for Lent, and there were two resources in particular, one from our primate's uh, office and the other one uh, that's there at the back. Um, 
uh, devotional booklets in that case, Connecting Lenten Scriptures and the Climate Crisis, uh, from our friends at salt.org. And it turns out that they had something else for us as well, so they sent us something for today. It is a poem, or, or more particularly, it's an epitaph written by the great C.S. Lewis after the death of his beloved wife, Joy Davidman. Uh, you, may not, you may know that um, uh, a confirmed and not uh, very young bachelor, uh, C.S. Lewis married Joy Davidman uh, uh, late in life, and, uh, and she was already ill with cancer when they married. And, um, and so he wrote this beautiful epitaph. And if we were trying to connect today, as some might try to do, it wasn't my original goal, uh, but if we were trying to connect the theme of love and ashes on Ash Wednesday, which falls on St. Valentine's Day, uh, this might be one way to do it. And forgive me, I'm not a poetry reader. Uh, Lewis would have probably done this better himself. Here, the whole world, stars, water, air, and field and forest as they were, reflected in a single mind, like cast-off clothes, was left behind. In ashes, yet with hope that she, reborn from holy poverty, in Lenten lands, hereafter may resume them on her Easter day. On Sunday, which in the old prayer book, uh, by the way, we called Quinquagesima Sunday, uh, or 50 days before Easter, I said something about uh, the season that we begin this evening with the symbol of ashes. Uh, as Christians, we are not, as some might suppose, gluttons for punishment. Ashes and sorrow and sacrifice and even times of insert uncertainty are not things we take on or walk into for their own sake. We make the journey and we follow the wisdom of taking moments to stop and listen and pray because of our hope in the joy of what comes afterward. Just as it was for Jesus and his first friends, our afterward is about transformation and new and radiant living, glorifying God and seeing the fulfillment of God's promises. That's why we do whatever it is we do. So we do or abstain from doing. We give and listen and pray and ask God to help us examine our hearts and actions, not for the, the sake of those activities themselves, but because they point us to and prepare us for something else. When the 40 days are over, and I'm always fond of remembering, and, and Bob Harvey always wants me to say, that's 40 days from today, not counting Sundays, um, when the 40 days are over in the holiest week of the year, we will be reminded that God so loved the world, which is that old English translation, or properly, God loved the world in a very particular way, by sacrificing himself, by suffering and dying and rising again. And God did all of this on account of love. And he did it to unleash the power of love and life for each of us and for the world which God has made. Now today in our gospel, Jesus cautions us about doing any kind of devotional things, even as I said on Sunday, spending time listening and reflecting on what's most important for the wrong ends. That's what Jesus is warning us about. He says that we might be tempted by the reward of others' good opinions of ourselves, kind of like virtue signaling, you know, um, by letting them see or know these things that we're doing or about to do. Now, I have to say that in this day and age, I don't think uh, that observing a self-disciplined and holy Lent impresses a lot of people outside this place. There's not a lot of good favor coming our way if people were to know that we were keeping Lent. So maybe that's not really a temptation anymore. For most people, I would say, um, outside the church, it might just have the opposite effect of 
confirming their opinion that we think we are holier than thou. But there is another temptation uh, to be avoided in this holy season, and maybe it's the, the replacement for that in Jesus' teaching. And that is that we need to be aware of taking on the symbol of our mortality, as we do today, or following any of our Lenten devotions over the next 40 days, if in our own opinions, not somebody else's, if we think God might be impressed by us, God's good opinion of us. True, our Lord looks for us to keep our promises and to follow through on our living out our Christian callings, but we don't achieve what is most important to us and God by the things that we do. We do it for love, just as Jesus did, period. So in a way I, that I would never have thought of before, I would never have tried uh, to find a connection between the two days on the calendar today between ashes and penitence um, and love, but it's here. It's right here in the scriptures. And if we want to assess it all after the fact, you know, in a little less than 50 days, if we want to see how we've done, we will know our Lent has been fruitful, which is the point, if we find ourselves more assured and accepting of and then willing to share the love of God hereafter. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I invite you to turn with me to the very bottom of page five in your worship booklets. Dear friends in Christ, every year at the time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to renew our life in the Paschal or the Easter mystery. We begin this holy season by remembering our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We begin our journey to Easter with the sign of ashes, which is an ancient sign speaking of the frailty and uncertainty of human life and marking the penitence of the community as a whole. I therefore invite you in the name of the Lord to observe a Holy Lent by self-examination, by penitence, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and by reading and meditating on the Word of God. And as you're able, and uh, as is your custom, um, uh, I invite you to kneel with me as we say together uh, this uh, portion of Psalm 51. And then we'll carry right along into the litany of penitence that uh, Wally's going to lead for us. Together. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. 
and I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Be favorable and gracious to Zion, and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with burnt offerings and oblations. Then shall they offer young bullocks upon your altar. Amen. Let us pray the litany of pen penitence as found near the top of page seven of the bulletin. Let us say together, most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you, to, to one another, and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth, that we have sinned by your own fault in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. our intemperate love of worldly gods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failures to commend the faith that is in us. Accept our re repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Lord. Your mercy is great. Almighty God, from the dust of the earth you have created us. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence, and a reminder that only by your gracious gift are we given eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now I invite those who wish to receive the symbol of ashes to uh, come forward and stand or kneel before the altar rail. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer ourselves and these gifts as we pray. Merciful God, turn us from sin to faithfulness. Accept our offering and prepare us to celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ our Savior, who is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, because you bid your faithful people to cleanse their hearts and to prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that reborn through the waters of baptism and renewed in the Eucharistic mystery, we may be more fervent in prayer and more generous in works of love. Therefore, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread, communion in Christ's body once broken. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall reign with him. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin. Let us pray. God of compassion, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you reconciled your people to yourself. Following his example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Know that you are beloved of God and precious in God's sight. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Do be seated for just a moment, please. Well, it's good to be with you this evening. And uh, as I announced earlier today, uh, there is that one Lenten resource at the back, and there's another available online through the Primates Fund, uh, both of which include a connection between our devotions and our uh, uh, desperately needed action on climate change. Uh, but there are other ways of keeping this season uh, in a holy and uh, a reflective way. And so if you'd like to talk about that, you can always give me a call or drop in to see me and we can talk about that together and think of uh, some things that might be useful, just unique to you. And I would remind us all that this is that season of the year up to and including Holy Week when uh, some people choose to make use of what might be called sacramental confession or just sharing uh, concerns or burdens with a Christian friend uh, however you want to see that, um, and, uh, and I certainly would want to make myself available for that. So you just have to give me a call, and we, we get together, uh, either in my office or alone up here at the altar, and, uh, and uh, partake in that uh, opportunity of confessing and unburdening and also being assured of God's forgiveness and, uh, and love. And that's, of course, also something that you can do with another Christian friend as well. You don't need a priest to do that. But uh, if you want to, uh, that's something that I'd be available for. And as I say, this is a particularly appropriate time of year to uh, make use of that opportunity. Um, we do a follow in our Lenten season, as I mentioned, uh, whatever devotions we choose to or partake of, or abstentions, or however we're going to do that, uh, each of the... Uh, the days of Lent, uh, except for Sundays, we can't be, we can't be down and disciplined uh, when we're celebrating the resurrection on Sundays. So that's our break day. 
as some people are delighted to know. And then, of course, it just counts up until Holy Week, and then we, uh, we change the focus of our devotion that week uh, as we anticipate the coming of, of uh, Easter. Uh, during Holy Week, we're going to be having a service on, uh, well, Passion Sunday with the Palms at the beginning of the week, Monday, Thursday night, uh, Good Friday uh, in the morning, and then we're going to, um, we've invited all the churches in the Anglican deanery uh, from far and wide to join us for a, the great vigil of Easter on Holy Saturday night as the sun is setting, around 7.45. And um, we're asking other people uh, in other churches to consider being a reader or a prayer leader or a chalice bearer, and uh, I'll have to coordinate all of that. Uh, we have already our preacher uh, set apart for that service, so that's kind of wonderful. And um, someone volunteered this morning to help me with the new fire of Easter. We light a fire outside the building and then bring that light the light of Christ into the church with the Paschal candle and uh, fill the church with the light of our, of our Easter candles. Um, so the only other thing that uh, I might ask you to consider uh, joining us in is uh, helping Jill and I uh, for a little Easter party that would follow that service. Uh, so uh, usually it involves chocolate and fruit and um, uh, something to drink. Um, it all has to be fairly portable. We won't make, you know, coffee or anything. It'll be all at the back of the church. So if you'd like to help with that, and of course we'll be hosting other people, so we want to be good hosts, uh, then you can let me know sometime in the next several weeks, uh, and we can uh, prepare that together. And of course, Easter Sunday itself, Resurrection Day, is uh, 8 and 10 o'clock. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.